Hi everyone, this section of the presentation is around channel choice and if you have any questions at all, please tweet them using the hashtag Ardmorelive or pop them in the YouTube chat. So my name is Ali O'Neill and my role at Ardmore is to understand your audience and choose the most effective media for you to reach them. So why is it important to do that? And perhaps I can paint a picture of an average day to bring that to life. So you wake up in the morning, you pick up your phone, you scroll through it, you look at LinkedIn, you get up, you make your kids breakfast, pop on the radio, Zoom call comes through, you've maybe got Sky News in the background, your WhatsApp is pinging off, Outlook emails are coming through, you go for a walk at lunchtime, you listen to a podcast, you see billboard advertising, you can get the picture. We are exposed to thousands of messages every single day. Twitter alone is now tracking at half a billion tweets per minute. So standing out with effective media choices will allow you to cut through that noise. So with all that distraction and noise going on, people's brains physically try to make decisions quickly. On average, you make 10,000 decisions in a single day. So to make all of those decisions, your frontal lobe looks for shortcuts. A really good example of this is to repeat the word stop five times. Stop, 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 stop. What do you do at a green light? Your brain is trying to join those dots together and make decisions for you quickly. Subsequently, your media needs to prompt people consistently towards your brand. Essentially, what you're trying to do is join the dots in their head between the ads that they've seen on TV, radio, social media, and cement your brand into people's heads, which in turn will prompt an in-store visit or a purchase. So, which channels do you choose to advertise on? Channel usage has gone through many changes during COVID-19, and I would stress that this is still fluid and it changes almost daily. Our job is to be ahead of the curve and anticipate channel changes so your company is using the most effective media mix. I'm now gonna walk you through those channel changes and give you some tips on how to reach your audiences. So the first channel that I want to talk about is radio and audio. So think about pre-COVID, radio would peak in the morning and evening commute, as you'd expect. But actually throughout COVID, radio listenership has steadily increased, but this is spread throughout the day. Secondly, over half of us are now listening via digital means. So that includes devices like your Alexa, a DAB radio and apps, all of which we can advertise on. So your customers, your clients, your potential new hires, they are listening, but in a new way. And we see this trend continuing as working from home likely takes a hold for the long term. I also wanted to touch on digital audio, such as podcasts and streaming subscriptions like Spotify, both of which are really, really surging. Spotify grew its numbers by nearly a quarter year on year, and it's seen booming interest in areas such as chill out playlists, workout playlists and cookery playlists. These will continue to thrive as consumers become even more loyal. So in summary on radio and audio, listening habits have changed, much more listening throughout the day and digital services are on the up. The second channel I want to touch on is live TV and video on demand, also known as catch up TV. So during COVID, live TV viewing stats were up 22%. TV is still a hugely important tool to grow your business, but how we would suggest you use it has changed. For example, much like radio, more people are engaging throughout the day. Power and I shown here is a local advertiser who have used this really, really well. They took advantage of cheaper costs and increased daytime viewers, particularly around the lunchtime news. But beware the news blues. What we're seeing is a good peak around lunchtime and then this dips off in the evening as people get a little bit anxious and fatigued around the news. And now looking at video on demand. So this is skyrocketed and this includes people like Disney Plus, Netflix and Amazon Prime. However, they do not permit advertising, but ITV Hub and all four do. Both of those channels have seen a surge in family viewing programs such as, Google, such as Gogglebox. Our advice, if you have a limited budget, get precise about who you're after and use video on demand to get in front of that ever increasing number of catch up viewers. Now, moving on to outdoor. Undoubtedly, it's one of the most hard hit channels. However, it can offer advantages as we ease out of lockdown. Movement is now back up above pre-COVID levels, but how and when people are moving is different. 
So in the short term, using panels at supermarkets is a no-brainer as we benefit from the longer dwell time as people queue. Furthermore, outdoor and residential suburban areas has proved popular for advertisers as they benefit from frequent, consistent exposures to people who are walking, running, cycling, a similar route near to their home. And now looking towards the uncertainty that the next few months brings, we would urge the use of digital outdoor. That'll allow you to change your messaging really, really quickly. And digital as a whole is performing very, very well. Simply supply is up. For example, news, newspaper uh, websites have substantially increased their online users. A recent example of digital advertising is shown here from Google. This was during last week's heat wave in London, and the advertisement says, want to tackle your inbox from the garden. So you can imagine if you're sitting in 35 degree heat in your apartment, that's probably gonna cut through to you, making a good platform very contextually relevant. A second digital tool I just want to touch on is Google search. And my colleague Ed has pointed out that this has exploded. One tip we would have would be to get your Google search whitelisted so you're able to bid around COVID terms, driving your listing up the rankings, which is really important if you're selling online. Now looking at social, much like digital, it is not only surviving, it is thriving during COVID. Uh, channels you'll likely be familiar with would be Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. But a new player is TikTok. Now, we completely understand adding a new channel in can seem a little bit daunting and frankly overwhelming. However, not acting will allow other brands to steam ahead and nip at your client base. Now, TikTok has had some bad press very recently around privacy concerns, but it is still enjoying huge, huge growth with currently over 10 million users in the UK. But what was really interesting to me is the developing um, age demographics. 80% of users are over 18. So depending on your service, this would be a strong arena to target a graduate audience, perhaps in terms of recruitment, fashion, or e-commerce. We work very closely with the TikTok team and we can provide easy to follow information on this platform if your brand would like to explore it. So in summary, look really, really closely at your audience and join the dots for them. The traditional channels such as radio, TV, and outdoor, they have advantages but they need to be tweaked to fit the post-COVID world and what might be coming next. Social and digital, thriving. Make sure your brand is making the most of these channels. To sum up, change and adapt. Consumer behavior has changed. So media choices need to be adapted for your company to keep growing. Thank you very much for watching today. Please don't hesitate to get in touch via LinkedIn or using the contact details on screen. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Paul for a really exciting presentation on creativity. Thank you.